we, we talked about image, images, using images uh, on our web pages. And you can almost use images for different purposes. Uh, some images are important part of the content. They're as valuable as the words on the page. If I was explaining how to change an oil filter in a particular kind of car, I might show a photograph of the engine, a photograph of where the air filter is, a photograph of the kind of tool that you need, and so on. That would be a lot better way to convey that information than trying to describe, well, if you go like maybe three inches over to the left, and you know, it would be very difficult to, to put it in words that way. So in that sense, it's valuable content. It's, it's just like the text on the page. It's important for the people as far as the understanding of the material goes. Or even like in our example, we're doing the Olympics example. If I was doing a web page on, on bobsledding, let's say, um, it would be good to have a picture of someone riding in a bobsled just to give you that visual. So if you see it on TV, it's like, oh, okay, I, I know about that. Because there's all kinds of sports in the Olympics that we don't see but once every four years, right? Bobsledding, luge, biathlon, all those things. So it would be good to have uh, a, an image to go along with that rather than just describing. So those kinds of images are for content reasons. Images can also serve as far as just sort of being decoration on the page, all right? Remember, it's a goal of you to have your page look good besides having good content. Uh, in addition to looking good, you want your page to, you want your page's appearance to help convey a bit about the content of the page. All right. We mentioned that with colors. You know, certain organizations might use certain colors or fonts or whatever to sort of give a feel to their page, to give a look to their page. You know, you want your page to look very formal, you'll use certain kinds of fonts and certain kinds of colors. You want your page to look fun, you'll use certain kinds of fonts and certain kinds of colors as well. So you can use color to do that, uh, and you can use uh, images to do that as well. You can also use color and images to help people um, be, be able to more easily um, organize the content of your page. For example, if we put a border around the navigation section of our page, that will make it stand out, and that will make it easily identifiable, especially if we do that in a consistent way, especially if we do that like on every page. People will begin to know, with, even without having to stop and read the page, that, oh, yeah, the navigation is always that box, always that silver box that's in a border, or something along those lines. So we do, we do color, we do fonts, we do borders, we do some images for all of those reasons as well. So what I want to look at today is using images, to start out with anyhow, is to use images to uh, be like background images on the page. All right? So let's start off and let's, let's download the example that we started with last time or ended with last time, and let's build upon it. So here it is. We had two pages. You can't see it. Caught myself. Here's our home page. Here's a page that we had about curling. In this case, the picture, besides being kind of fun with their with their crazy uniforms that they wear, um, also shows what curling looks like, and you know, so it adds to the content 
uh, of a page. Um, something that might be good, for example, might be it might be good to have the Olympic rings as the background of this page. That would sort of instantly identify to people that this is a page about the Olympics. So let's go and let me Google. Olympic rings. And I can go for images. And I'm going to look and I'm going to go with this image. And I'm going to visit the page. And this is from ABC News, not ABC American Broadcasting Company, but Australian Broadcasting Company. So I'm going to go and save this image as, I'm going to put it in my folder. I'm going to change the name of it to Rings. And I'm going to be sure to put a credit on this page where I got it from. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, um, where did I get it from? Here we go. So I'm going to go and open up the home page to to say background image from, and I might as well put a link to it. Australian Broadcasting Company. All right. So now I want to go and make it the background of the page. This kind of image is more or less for decoration or to create uh, uh, within the user a sense of identification or branding that this is a page about the Olympics. So it's not really essential content, I would say, like the, page, the picture of the curling is. All right? Those kind of images I generally put, like background images for things and so on, I'm generally going to put in the uh, CSS. Because CSS is about how the page looks. The HTML is about the content of the page. The CSS is about how the page looks. So... The way you do a background image is like this. You say background, instead of having the color there like we had in this case, you can say URL, and then you put the name of the image in. Uh, again, assuming it's in the same folder, you would just put the name of the image in. So in this case, it's in the same folder. It's called rings.jpg. So I could put in parentheses, in quotes, rings.jpg So you can have a couple things for backgrounds. You can have colors, you can have images. You could actually have both. All right? Um, we'll talk about both in in a minute. Why you might why, why you might want to have both. All right. So if we save this and we look at our web page, that's what we see. All right. Can you, um, with that, Mike, can you, can you change the transparency of it so that um, it's, it looks more watermarked and you can... Uh, Absolutely. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Notice a couple things. 
Notice, first of all, that the rings start to repeat. All right? In other words, this is tiled. That's called tiled, when you have an image tiled, where you have an image that, uh, an image that uh, repeats itself like in a, in a grid. So by default, that's what the image will do. So it's tiled vertically and it's tiled horizontally. It's just that in this case, we don't have enough, uh, we don't have enough space to put, put, put in a full one sideways and we don't have enough space vertically. So we just see this little edge of the blue ring repeating again. Uh, I, I generally don't like that. So what you can, if you have something like that. So I would say no repeat, no dash repeat. Sometimes we'll look at, we'll look at an example of a tiling that works, all right? Um, sometimes you deliberately pick a, a smaller image and you let it tile and it forms a pattern just like you might have a pattern on like a linoleum floor where the pattern sort of interlocks with each other. But I can put in no repeat and get that. So now I have that. Now as was observed, you know, this looks okay. Um, But the problem is, is it makes some things difficult to read. For example, right here, we have black text on a black background. Makes it hard to read. Here, it sort of cuts in it and so on. So, there's, there's a number of things that you could do to fix that. All right? One of the things to do uh, would be to edit the image to make it look more like a watermark. Everyone knows what I mean by a watermark, right? Like on, uh, like an official document um, or something like that. It's like if you kind of hold it up to the light, you can see something in the background. It sort of keeps, uh, it's, one, it's one way to prevent things from being counterfeited. Uh, another thing, like even, like even in memos, sometimes memos you might have the company logo very faintly in the background. All right? Whereas that helps you show that it's from this company or that company but it doesn't like make it hard to read. Whereas this is kind of hard to read. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to uh, change, actually change this image to make it watermarked. Now I'm gonna follow my own advice, right? And I'm going to go and I'm gonna make a copy of this before I start editing this image, all right? Because if I don't, then if I mess it up and save it, you know, I will have lost the original image. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to make a copy of the rings. And to be consistent, I might as well call it original. I'm going to use uh, an editing, uh, an image editing tool um, that is an open source tool and is a very high quality. And if you don't want to pay for Photoshop, this is open source and it's absolutely free and it has many of the capabilities of Photoshop. And people do you do professional work with this tool. And this tool is called GIMP. GIMP stands for new, G-N-U image manipulation program or something like that. All right. So I'm going to right mouse on this. I'm going to say open this with and I'm going to pick new image manipulation program or GIMP. Now it's going to take a little while to load unfortunately. But it's a very powerful tool, and it's a tool that I suggest that, you know, if you're interested in doing more than just very basic photo manipulation, then um, it's, it's a good tool to have. And it's free. What do I mean by open source? I said, I said it's open source. What do I mean by it being open source? It's free to obtain, and then you can, you can alter it if you want to, right, and then redistribute it? Or is okay. That, is that wrong? It's it's usually.
free to obtain. You can alter it because you get the actual code that comprises the program. All right. Um, so really a community of people around the world create and maintain this. And again, they're typically going to be free. You were, you were going to add something to that? That's basically it. Just you get the source code and you can right. look around and modify it as you see fit. Right. Yeah, you get the source code. And the source code is really the, the basic instructions. It's like our HTML code, but it's in whatever language is used to do that. All right. So I can go here and I can go to colors and let's see. I'm going to make this a lot brighter. I don't think I like that. And I'm going to make it sort of faded. And my hope is going to be that I can do this uh, enough so that even though it's in the background, the black text will be readable on top of it. So let me do hue and saturation. Fade a little bit more. Yeah, maybe that's good enough. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with that. You know, this isn't a class in using GIMP. You know, the idea here is what I'm what I'm doing with it. I'm making the picture sort of have a faded appearance by making it brighter and and so on. So I can go and I can save this. Oops. I want to overwrite rings.jpg. If you save it, you save it in GIMP's own format. To get it in a basic image format, you have to use uh, export. Uh, so I'm going to go and export it. And I'm going to keep this open just for the heck of it. But I'm going to view the page now. All right. Now, for the most part, I think I can read it no matter what because it's, it's faded enough. If it wasn't faded enough, I could go and, and try that again until I got it where it was faded. All right. So that's one thing that you can do to make your, your, your backgrounds more readable, your background images. Some pictures are better than others for that. A picture that has an awful lot of colors in it, like a photograph of, of fall scenery, let's say, for example, that's going to have red and orange and shadows and bright sky and, and blue and green and all that, might be very hard to do because no matter what color your text is, unless you really, really manipulate it, those colors are going to be hard to read. But something like this, really, uh, the only problem was, the main problem was the black text on the black uh, image. In which case, we could, we could, you know, we could possibly change the font color, change the font size, whatever, to make it readable. So that's one thing that you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can put a transparent background on the other things in your page. All right. So let's go and we got this one right. All right. So let's go back and I'm going to make a copy of this image. And I'm going to call this one faded or watermark. And I'm going to go and undo all the changes I made here. And I'm going to save it again. So now we're going to be back to where we were before. The other thing I could do is I could make these things, these, this paragraph, this navigation, and all that, 
have sort of a transparent background. All right, so how do I do that? Well, we can Google it. CSS transparent background. And that property is the image opacity. So, opacity of 0.5 will make it half see-through. An opacity of 1 will make it completely solid. And an opacity, opacity of 0 will make it invisible. This little snippet of code you need to use if someone's using IE8 and earlier. Now we can fairly safely assume no one is using IE8, but I will include that as well. This is really the line that you're going to need going forward. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my CSS file, and I'm going to say make my section have a background of white, and an opacity of 0.5. A lot of students have indicated to me that they, pre they prefer to do their CSS like this, where you have one attribute per line, then it makes it easier to read. And by all means, if you find that easier to read, go for it. So instead of having one line for the style rule, you break the style rule into multiple lines, and, and that's fine. So what this will do now is this will make the background uh, image white. Let me remove the opacity and show you what you get. If I did that, then I get this over top of that, in which case the background image is completely cut off. I'm going to do the same thing to the nav by the way. All right. That gets rid of the problem of being able to read the text over top the image, but it sort of like gets rid of the image, right? Um, so you can't really see the image at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those things partially see-through. So I have an opacity of 0.5, which means that they're going to be half see-through. So when I do this, now we get this. All right. So you can see the rings behind it, but you can still see the text. Now, 0.5 looks too low, all right, too low of a number. Because I don't know how it looks to you folks looking on the screen, but for me, just looking at the monitor, the text is still a little hard to read. So I'm going to change that. Instead of 0.5, I'm going to change it to 0.7. So it will be 70% solid. That makes it a little, little darker. Maybe I'll bump it up to 90%. All right. And there you can kind of see the image peeking through, but the stuff is on top of it. So you can play with the opacity of this to uh, allow you to sort of see through a little bit um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the things. Now, one thing I don't like about this, all right, is notice how there's a little gap between the sections. Mm -hmm. that, sort of, that sort of spoils some of the effects here. What I could do is if I go and say star margin zero that'll get rid of all the margins 
We're going to talk about margins later on in class. Not, not today, but later on in the course. Margin effectively is a space between things on your web page. Remember, the way your web page looks depends on two factors. One is what you have put in the CSS. The second is the default values of the browser. So, I didn't put anything in the CSS about the browser. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, about the margins. Therefore, the defaults of the browser takes effect. And, do I save it? No. No. Yeah, boy, I'm not thinking today. Should be star margin colon semicolon. All right, and now that looks like that. Yeah, let's make this point .8, point .8. Do you have to have the filter part as well for the opacity? This, this is a code that's needed for IE8 and earlier. Really older browsers, yeah. You probably could, we could get rid of it. Okay. But I, I'm showing oh, okay. it just to, yeah. Because older browsers, older inter versions of Internet Explorer did it in a little bit different way. All right. So, yeah, I, I kind of like that. All right. I kind of like that. Again, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to hang this in a refri on my refrigerator when I get home. All right. But, it's a nice looking web page, not nothing exceptional, all right, but it's certainly better than some of the earlier attempts that we had, all right. Um, I'm also going to put the same thing for the footer in the CSS because I did nav and section. I'm also going to do footer. All right, so you can see that. Now, I don't have to do just backgrounds on the body of the page. I could do backgrounds uh, anywhere on the page. All right. Um, for example, just for laughs, let's put a background underneath the H1. All right. Let's look for a little image of a snowflake. Snowflake icon. There we go. That's small. Okay, there, there, there's, there's my winner. So I'm going to go, and this is from Icon Show Me. So I'm going to go and save this image as Snowflake Icon. PNG, and I can go and in my CSS. Under the H1, I can say background URL snowflake icon.png. Notice now with that, 
the the um, text is hard to read because the the icon is mainly white. So I could go and then change the head H1 color of the text to be black, which I could put black or I could put zero 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 zero. All right. Um, let's see. What else could I do? Um, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make the height of the H1 higher. I'm going to make the height bigger, rather. So I'm going to say H1 height, which is an attribute we haven't talked about before. I'm going to make 128 pixels to match the size of the background image. All right. So we have that. Um, I can do font size to M to make that text bigger. probably fade the background of the um, snowflake if I wanted to. I'm, really, all I wanted to illustrate is that uh, you don't have to put the background just on a body. You can you could put the background elsewhere as well. So you can make uh, a background for any element of the page, not just um, the body of the page. Notice that it tiles, which means that it's multiple ones are going across the page. All right, let me show you something that's very common. What's very common is to have a layout that looks like this. And let me sketch it on the board. It's very common to have a layout of a page that looks kind of like this. You have everything in your page in the center of the browser window. Around the edge of the content of the page, sort of making a picture frame, you have a background image. All right? Now, you could do a background image like what we did before with the Olympics rings and then fade this or something. Uh, or you could make a, you know, you, you could have any kind of giant image on there and sort of fade the middle section like we did. But a lot of times what we do is we put, create a tiled image. It's sort of like the tiles that you have, uh, you know, on linoleum or whatever, where the pattern interlocks. Like a tile might look like this. Part of my drawing. And with a dot in the center. And when the browser tiles these images, this interlocks, interlocks to form a little pattern. And so on. So that's what we're going to try to do this time. Let me put the credit for that other background image on here. And I'm actually going to make a brand new I'm going to make a copy 
of this whole folder and I'm going to create a new style sheet. That's a nice thing to do if you are creating a website for someone is to show them options, right? So instead of coming up, like let's say if I was developing a website for a client, instead of coming up with one design and say this is what I came up for you, I might come up with several designs. Here's the nice thing. I don't have to recreate all the web pages from scratch. I just need to change the CSS. All right? And when I change the CSS, the page will have the same content on it, but it will look completely different. So then I can ask the person, what do you like? This layout or that layout? And they can come to some conclusion about what they like. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close out of these pages. I'm going to make a complete copy of my Olympics folder. I'll rename this to alternative. And I'm going to edit this guy to use a brand new style sheet. I'm going to change the style sheet completely from what it was before. And I'm going to look for background, CSS background tiles or patterns. It's a better one. All right, and we can find a pattern that we think looks good uh, for what we're doing here. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter which one I pick, right? There's even little snippets of code that allow you to generate your own pattern. All right. So I'm going to pick just for the heck of it um, this. This looks like a subtle enough pattern. Um, might be actually too subtle where we can't see it. Let's pick something a little more. Ah, let's pick this guy. All right. It's a watermark on it. Um, let's add free in here. And let's add snow. There we go. So I'm going to save this image and Snowflake tile is good, so I'll use that, and I'm going to put it in my second, my alternative folder. And I'm going to build the CSS file a little bit at a time. I'm just sort of throwing these credits in here just so that I'm in compliance with the law. Uh, with, if I had more time, I would format these better. 
So let's open the CSS file. And I'm going to start by we get rid of everything. Except I'm going to say body. URL, background URL. Snowflake dot tile dot JPG. I think it was a JPG. We'll find out now, won't we? And then I'm going to view this web page. All right. Looks good, but it's impossible to read. All right. So now I'm going to put all my different sections with a white background. So I'm going to say header background white. And I'm going to do the same for nav, section, and footer. Alright. I do that. It's fine, but a couple things. I'm really not seeing a lot of the frame. Alright. And uh, there's sort of like a gap between those things that kind of look ugly. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to put in what I had before. I'm going to say everything. I want to have a margin of zero. Mike, did you forget? Did you have to put in? Okay. I should have a semicolon there, yeah. yes. It forgave me for doing that. All right. Now, it doesn't really show, like, I want the frame to be all the way around it, all right? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make the width of each of these things be a certain size. So I'm going to say width 450 pixels. A pixel is like a dot on a computer screen. So I'm going to make the width of all of these 450 pixels. When you want the body one to be wider than the other one? Uh, actually, I don't want the body one to have it at all. That was my mistake. I want the other ones to have it, not the body. Okay. Well, that kind of did it. Now I want to center it. Okay. So how I would center it would be this. On each of these... I'm going to say margin 0px auto. And I'll talk about what that means in a minute. All right. Things have four margins, right? They have a top margin, a left margin, a right margin, a bottom margin, and a left margin. If you specify two values for the margin, it goes around like a clock. The first one is the margin for the top. The second one is the margin for the right. The third, the, the bottom is the first one again, and the left is the second one again. So I said for this, margin zero pixels auto. So the top means zero. The right is auto. What does auto mean? It means it automatically calculates it. In other words, it centers it. The bottom is zero pixels, so there's nothing, there's no margin at the bottom. And then the right margin, or the left margin, would again be automatic. So the result of that is doing this would center it. Now, I'm almost where I would, would want this to be. 
The thing I'm going to do, though, to sort of make this closer to what I want is I'm going to put a top margin on just the header element. So the header, I'm going to say, I want a margin, top margin of 50 pixels. I want the right to be automatic. I want the bottom margin to be, well, let's leave it like that. I don't want this. This is going to give me a problem. So let's see what kind of problem it gives us. Fifty on the top, fifty on the right, fifty on the bottom, fifty uh, auto on the left. So fifty auto, fifty auto. So I can specify the margins this way: fifty auto, zero auto. So it'll be fifty on the top, automatic on the right. No margin on the bottom, and automatic on the left. So what it will do is it will achieve the effect I want where my, all my content is in this block that's centered on the page. All right? Now that's very simple, right? Um, and again, I'm not saying that these are, you know, beautifully designed web pages. But notice how we're moving in the direction of taking our pages which just before just had raw content on them and doing something to improve the appearance of them. All right? Questions over this? Can you show that uh, last piece of code that you yeah. just showed, Mike, please? Margin 50, okay. 50 on the top, auto on the right, so it will be centered, uh, zero pixels on the bottom, auto on the left. So notice how in today's lecture I threw in a couple of new CSS things and pay attention. And I do post these examples if you want to look them up. But I did things with the margin. All right, Margin is the space between blocks uh, on your web page. I did something with the font size, if I remember right. And I did something else um, that I don't recall. But it's in the example. So take a look at it. I also talked about the concept of having one web page that has two different appearances. And that is so important how easily you can do that. All right? Because it's good when you're prototyping a system. When you're developing a system for someone and you want to show them an example of what it could look like. You can show them different versions fairly easily and get feedback. Maybe they'll like the font of one but the colors of another. And then you can combine a, create a style sheet that combines those two. This also will become important when we start talking about putting web pages on mobile devices. Because we may not want the web page to look the same on a computer versus a mobile device. And we might use a different style sheet to control how our page looks on a mobile device versus how it looks on our web page, so, uh, or on a computer. So the idea of taking the same web page and being able to fairly simply format a totally different way using different CSS really is an important concept. And we'll be coming back to that throughout the semester. All right. That's all I had for today. I'm going to go and unlock the lab. Then I'll come back to get my files. And uh, then I'll be back in lab. Next time, if you have not read already, read about, read the project.